Right, next up. In 1859, my hero, Charles Darwin, published his theory of evolution by natural selection. Now, even to this day, some people still contest that theory, often giving the eye as an excellent example of something far too complex and perfect to have evolved from scratch. Well, I'm on a mission to prove Darwin right. Eons ago, animals had to bump into things to know what they were. Imagine the benefits if they could develop an awareness of food before actually stumbling upon it, or of predators lurking nearby. Well, lucky for us, evolution has given us the perfect tool for this, the eye. But how on earth does something so incredibly complex actually evolve? Before I answer that, I've come to the Oxford Eye Hospital to find out how my own eye works. The eye is very much like a camera. The light rays will come into the eye, they'll be focused by the lens, like the lens of a camera. Yeah. They'll go through the jelly of the eye and then they'll be focused onto the back of the eye, onto a structure known as the retina, which is lined by the photoreceptor cells, which is like the film of the camera. Okay. And the photoreceptor cells generate an electrical signal from the light energy. This electrical signal is then sent along through the optic nerve back into the brain. And that's translated into the image that we actually see. The eye really is extraordinary, but can something so complex evolve in gradual stages? To find the answer, I've come to meet world-renowned evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins. Richard, the eye is such a complex structure. I can understand why some people find it hard to believe it evolved out of nothing. Even Darwin commented on its complexity, didn't he? Yes, Darwin said that it was impossible to imagine um, that it could have evolved by gradual degrees. But reason tells me that if there were a series of gradual improvements, then it would be easy for it to have evolved by natural selection. And you find all over the animal kingdom eyes in various stages of what look like stages of evolution. And the great thing about this is that we've got examples of the intermediate stages of this evolution in modern-day animals. So, what would the first step be? In here, for example, is Euglena, which is a single-celled organism, just has a little eye spot at the head end of the cell. And that eye spot is just sensitive to light, so it can't form an image, it can't see anything. All it can tell is whether it's light or dark. So that could be the first step. Okay. But if you imagine that you had a sheet of cells each of which is sensitive to light. This has been painted with a substance that glows in ultraviolet. So this is an ultraviolet light. And if we hold the ultraviolet light over, you can see it's sort of glowing. OK, so this demonstrates cells that are reacting to light. Yes, <laughs> that's just a flat sheet of cells. Which and you can't tell again, what direction doesn't the light is coming direction. from then. But if you just gradually evolve a slight curve, yeah. turn it into a cup. Light that's coming from that direction hits this side of the bent sheet of the cup. Whereas if the light's coming from over here, yeah. then the other side lights up. So you can tell what direction the light's coming from, mm. and perhaps you could tell the direction that a predator's shadow is passing over. This means that animals with cup eyes, like these planarium worms, have a huge evolutionary advantage over animals with just a flat eye. Then how do we progress from something that has a cup that can tell the direction of light to something that can actually form an image well, of what it's seeing? Well, over evolutionary time, if you imagine that the cup gradually evolves to get deeper and deeper and deeper yeah. and close up the, the hole at the top, then you get a pinhole camera. Now, a pinhole camera is a pretty poor piece of work. It doesn't actually show you much of an image, but it does show you a crude image. You can actually see something. And this is a pinhole camera here. In front is a little hole. There's a screen inside there. Yeah. Have a, have a look. Okay. And if I now hold this in front of the pinhole... Okay. Wow, yeah, no, I can see the A. It's not too bad. I mean, it's, it's blurry, obviously, and it's upside down, but, yeah, I can see it. And a perfect example of this next stage in the evolution of the eye can be seen in many aquariums. This is the mollusk Nautilus, a relative of the extinct ammonite, with an eye on each side of its head that acts like a pinhole camera, which means that these little fellas can see blurry images. This image might be good enough for an Nautilus, but what if you wanted a bit more detail? The solution to the problem, as, as any 
but he will tell you, is a lens. Mm -hmm. And a proper man-made lens is exactly shaped. It's a glass, refracts light. How on earth does that come about in nature? Well, um, to get a really good image, you do need a, a decently curved lens. But any old bit of gunge, which is transparent, will do if it's just approximately curved. Okay. I mean, this is just a polythene bag full of water, and it just mm. naturally falls into a, a curved shape. Now, if I stick this bag of water... Bring the bag forward a bit. There, there, perfect. That's not what you might call a real lens. Think of that as just a blob of gunge in the, in the cup eye. But if this gunge or jelly hardened, it would form a proper lens and transmit a brighter, clearer image. And we can see an example of this back at the aquarium. Sea snails have a blob of jelly that acts like a very simple lens, so they can focus on an object even if that image is still a bit blurry. But it does mean they can make out food and predators. And once you've got that, then because it works a bit better than nothing at all, you've got the raw material for natural selection to go to work. And, and over generation it. after generation after generation, just each stage, just slightly, slight improvement in the curvature, slight improvement in the transparency, and you've got a steady ramp of improvement all the way up to a proper lens, uh, such as you get in the vertebrate eye. So really the eye is a brilliant example of how complex structures, and then obviously simpler ones, can evolve quickly and easily. The eye is sort of legendarily complicated, and so if you can show that that evolved very easily and quickly o over time, then all the more easy it would have been to evolve something simple. What's even more incredible is that as the eye evolved over millions of years, wildly differing species like monkeys and mollusks seem to have developed the same solutions. And at the top of the mollusk evolutionary ladder is the octopus eye. It's got a proper lens, it can adjust its own exposure. In fact, its eye is pretty much like our own, except that it comes from a completely different evolutionary line. Wow, you got to meet Richard Dawkins. Nice. I know, and he signed my selfish gene. Nice. Here's a question for you. How long does it take to get from nothing to a, a working eye? Well, scientists have done a lot of modelling on this, and they reckon it only took about 400,000 generations to get from the simplest light-sensitive cell all the way to a fully functioning eye. So, given that this all started in simpler aquatic organisms that have very short life cycles, this means the eye would have evolved in less than half a million years, which may sound like a lot, but actually, in even evolutionary terms, it's the blink of an eye. Do you like that? I like what you did there. Thank you, so very, you much. Did there. very And good. that's not the only bit of the story because, of course, another completely different kind of eye has evolved as well, the compound eye. If you want to find out about that one, check out our website, slash bang.